Linda Moulton is a respected researcher. And personally, I don't know the woman. I've seen her videos on YouTube. She's well, well documented, been in a lot of talk shows. Linda Moulton, M-O-U-L-T-O-N. And she's gone on public saying that the hybrids, the extraterrestrial human hybrids, are here to take over the world. They're here to overthrow mankind. How do you counteract, how, how do you respond to something like that? What, what evidence do I, do I bring to say that, Linda, you're wrong? And the only thing that I can bring to bear on that is several pieces of evidence. One is my testimony. This is why my story is so very important. As I said in 1992, late 92, November, um, November 22nd, 1992. I know the date now, November 22nd. I was taken into custody by Air Force Intelligence. There is a record on my police record of this. And it even gives a number of how many people had me in custody. That does not say why. Okay. And it goes on to say how long they had me in custody. And this went on for about, there's about three or four times on my record where Air Force Intelligence took a man in Texas at age 20. <clears throat> All I can give you is my events of what happened. They brought to me a four and a half foot tall girl um, it may not have been the first time. There, there was a black-haired girl. There was a blonde-haired girl. The one that we focus on the most, she went by the name Benico. So she told me to call her. And she had contacted me by telephone prior to the Air Force Intelligence coming to my house in Pelican Bay, Texas. <clears throat> How she contacted me by phone, I don't know. But they didn't know that she was doing this. She found some means of doing it. She then preps me. She gets me ready for this and says, they're going to try to use me to scare you. I won't be used that way. Who are you? Is this a prank call? What's going on? And she goes on to tell me. She's a human extraterrestrial hybrid from a program that started in the 1950s at least with the U.S. government in the 1950s. But in truth, if you look at the Dalai Lama's book, uh, written by, oh, what's his name? It took him five years to write that thing. Forgive me, I don't remember your name. The Dalai Lama talks about the Chenrezig, the children sent from above, sent down in Tibet. And he said that the stories of the Chenrezig um, they go back 2,000 years in Tibetan history, Eastern Tibet, and lived in caves. They were around for 2,000, 2000 years before the 20th century for America or any of this ever took off. The way the Dalai Lama describes these special children, he said that they are the children who have been given part of the DNA from, he said, well, he didn't say DNA, but from, Part of who they are is part is, is the gods and part human. He goes on to describe how they teach love and compassion and unity, much as what Daryl Anka, bless his heart, and that um, Bashar that he channels uh, brings to the world. Um, so, are, is it the same race? I believe so. This has been going on for thousands of years. Uh, it's who they are. Perhaps this is how they reproduce. And perhaps they don't make love and make babies as human beings do. As long as the human race is here, they're going to procreate them in that fashion. Um, there, I mean, but then you say, well, that sounds kind of alien. Well, it, we are talking about extraterrestrials here. And some of the Zetas who are created by the Mantids, uh, 
these photos I've taken in the forest out here depict both zeta beings and mantids have different origins. The mantids, as they're called, also known as the ancients, are believed to be more than a billion years old. They are a very old civilization in this galaxy. They go back, uh, yeah, researchers and experiencers alike have picked up on a, a billion plus making them first ones, real life first ones, if you follow the show Babylon 5 and, and its terminologies. Um, I don't like to use sci-fi TV shows as examples because that sounds like I'm a little deluded and I'm taking off on... But <clears throat> without getting scientific, yes. The, the infrared pictures I've got in the forest depict six-foot-tall praying mantis-looking beings that are invisible to the eye, but picking up on infrared camera. Now for you, my YouTube subscribers, you've seen some of these pictures. I go down that forest all the time. Now around them are the Zetas, or what people have commonly known as the Greys. They are the servants. They're the ones that have been created by the Mantids. The Mantids allow this. Or they're also known as the Ath Athians. The Athians. I like that term better. The Athians. Uh, the Athians are real first ones, okay? Now, are they peaceful? Well, I walked out of that forest. I'm not zapped and burned and singed with clothing flying everywhere. Here I am, touch wood. Um, I've been down that forest the last few years. I get, everything I get is peaceful. I have no indication of any harm or danger. And so we look at the research of the Hindu Bible, where it talks about a civilization that interbred with humankind. And that goes back, we believe the Hindu Bible was written 7,000 years ago, perhaps even back to the last Ice Age. Uh, humankind has been on Earth for nearly 100,000 years. Homo sapien. So, is this something new? Well, it could be that the more people, people said, well, there's a, yeah, but what's going on, Jason? There's millions of alien abductions going on. Well, perhaps that's because of the numbers of humankind on Earth. Think about it, Linda. Please. Linda Moton. Please consider this. As the numbers of humankind grew up on this planet, what we've seen uh, is perhaps an increased number of abductions or taking, where they take people and harvest DNA to create the Sasani race, the hybrids. That's just observational research talking. Not hypothetical, not conjecture, not, not trying to throw some psychic connection at you about that. That is what, I've just stepped out of the field in that forest, this is what, I, I, I can't help but come out of there with, with this is the conclusion. If you had 10 billion people on earth, you're going to have maybe 150 million abductees. Maybe a billion abductees. It, it seems that back in human history, and thousands of years ago, when there was probably no more than 200 million people on Earth, you might have had less than the number of people in Tibet being taken. Maybe a few thousand. They're doing it exponentially. As the numbers increase of mankind, the numbers increase of their reproduction of the Sasani species. And how long have they been around? How long have the hybrids been, around, been in existence? If you look at Mars and all the artifacts that the Mars rover has been picking up and um, seeing, <coughs> we're looking at a civilization that dated back to something around several million, half a billion years ago on Mars. The humanoid form, the Homo sapien existence has been here before. There is evidence to suggest that there are human-like footprints of various sizes. 
that have been seen around the planet that date back tens of millions of years. Um, these, these footprints are documented. There's one in Mexico of a female looking footprint, one in China that's nearly two feet long. And so this process of the humankind's existence, there may be different segments in Earth's history of a human-like civilization living. And there may be in that long history where the mantids and the zetas have arrived and reproduced what you call the hybrids, the cousins of mankind, have had a long history. So as long as Homo sapien or this species procreates through sexual contact and continues to exist, so too will these uh, hybrid beings, as you call them, continue to come into existence as a consequence of the existence of the Homo sapien species. It's almost like the larva moth that goes in, incubates inside of a host. I, I, like, I, like, I like to think of it as, as this uh, species of bird that goes in... Um, what was the name of that species? It was a cuckoo bird. What was it? Oh. Anyways, it goes in, knocks out an egg from the nest, and it puts in one of its own eggs. So you've got four eggs of robins that will come up and one of this cuckoo bird. And, and it, it's the mother robin that will then incubate and grow and raise that of its kind. It may be an ongoing process. If we look at it more in the long term uh, time and stop seeing it in decades in 20th century because people become paranoid and frightened because they like to put a lot of things on this. They like to say a lot of things. We're dealing with a very benevolent and very special, compassionate race that is no harm to anybody. My own experience in 1992 when they brought Benico to me, of course she had the larger than normal eyes, and even the shape of her face uh, matches the, the cliffs, the cliff carvings, freezes on Mars. Very similar looking carvings have been seen. So we have a civilization that was wiped out up there that came to live down here on Earth. And we have a, a continuing process where we have the human race becomes host to another civilization. They may not sexually reproduce. They can have sex. There have been, uh, yes, cases of that. So in 1992, she comes to me. They bring her to me. Seven or eight RVs, black tent glass, with armed people that get out. And then we have an introduction. We meet each other. And they monitor how we get on with each other. Uh, sadly, I then was witness to them taking her from me and grabbing her by her hair and hitting her and assaulting her. So we have a civilization that was observing this in my courtyard. Of course they saw that. They didn't do anything. And she told me, they can't. This is about setting an example. She said, if we do anything, they do anything to save me, and she told me, then that's going to say to the human race, we're a threat to you. So basically, they were beating up the Dalai Lama, <laughs> a female Dalai Lama. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. They just basically took a Dalai Lama out to my courtyard. A very high priestess, Buddhist monk is what you could think of her as, and beat the crap out of her in front of me. So to Linda Mouton, Hal, I think H-O-W-E, Linda Hal Mouton, and other researchers like Dr. David Jacobs, I respect you. I respect you very much. I do see you as colleagues. But I'm bringing you, you said evidence, I'm, gonna, I'm bringing you historical evidence. 
I'm bringing you observational evidence. I'm bringing you what I've done in the field, my own infrared pictures, and my own experience. Three. Three-way. This is a three-dimensional kind of video here of how to say to you, they are not here to take over the planet and supplant the human race. Because if that happened, that would be the death of their civilization. So the human race is wiped out extinct, and they're the only ones here. Well, if, if all this research and what I've been told is correct, and Benico's not, not lying to me, and I'm not saying she is, then, based on what she told me as well, if the human race went into extinction, you're gone. Within a thousand years, they would go into extinction. There'd be no hybrids left. They would be gone. There is a need for humankind to ascribe, prescribe a kind of sexual connotation to something. Everybody has it. Everybody does it. Everyone goes to bed. Everyone looks at porn on the internet. Everybody wants to masturbate. Everybody wants to have sexual contact with each other. There's this sexual thing about humankind. Humankind is about um, reproduction and pleasure. Now, why do human beings try to put, um, why do they try to put that on there? Why do they try to label, well, the hybrids, the Sani race, the hybrids have sex and make babies too? I've not seen all of Bashar's videos, Chidaralinka's channel videos. Uh, I haven't researched in depth what Bashar has said, gone through Daryl about that. Um, so I don't know if this is contradicting that or what that is, but it's just that they don't reproduce in the fashion the way human beings do. Human beings is all focused on this. In fact, sex is still one of the biggest markets on planet Earth. It makes billions and billions every year in in profit. Uh, well, that's very sad in many respects because if a 2%, maybe 1% of that interest in sex and porn was put towards science and industry, we would already be on Alpha Centauri by now. We would already be we'd already be on the stars. We'd already be on other planets by now. That's true. If you could put some of that interest in sexual activity and interest in sex and money in science and industry, you would be 1% of it, just 1% is what I'm going to say to you, uh, and spent 1% of your time away from sex. You would find your life would change. You would accomplish hundreds of things you never thought possible. You'd stop drinking, you'd stop doing drugs, you'd stop fighting, you'd stop divorcing, you'd stop issues of emotional abuse, you'd stop sex slavery, sex trafficking would stop. You would find poverty would end in vast parts of the world. It would all turn around. But because of such a preoccupation with that sort of thing, people have said, well, they do the same thing. That's how they reproduce. To my knowledge, there hasn't been anything of any experience that's ever gone aboard craft with Zetas and seen hybrid beings standing there saying, here's our offspring, our children. We made these through making love. We're married. Um, they have mates. Yes, they have communal families, but to my knowledge, there hasn't been any, uh, certainly Benico didn't, didn't indicate any uh, anything like that. She didn't say to me there was any kind of mating ritual where they had, they had sex. Uh, they do make love, are capable of this, and have done with human beings. But it sounded more recreational than for survival or procreation, or continuing their species. 
And because the evidence stretches back thousands of years on this planet, it may sound unusual to you to harvest DNA from another species to keep the population going of another species. But we are dealing with extraterrestrials. They are going to be thinking outside the box when it comes to this planet. It is going to be different from what you're accustomed to. But then you are dealing with another civilization, another race. Um, they may within themselves reproduce without always the need of humankind. Their DNA genetic cloning of more hybrids. But that can only go so far before they have to come back and get fresh stock. And the human race provides a great deal of fresh stock. Um, so what are, the, what are the benefits of this will be my next video. That everybody benefits from this. It's not taken without being given back. So my story is something given back. Darylinka's Bashar is a giving back. Um, Bridget Nelson's work and what she's brought to the public about the love coming from these hybrid children is the giving back your own personal experiences and eventually when everybody's ready for this there will be a contact where they themselves are going to be saying this and it's going to be about giving back their focus is more spiritual and energetic than on the issue of procreative sex on in a physical life. And that'll be the subject of the next video. Why they don't have such a preoccupation with having, making love and making babies that way. Because they're more rooted energetically and they're conscious in a higher dimension. Though they have physical bodies, they have the technology to go there in these higher dimensions. So there's more of this focus over many thousands of years to, to be a part of that and to be here. So here becomes, well, we need bodies. Well, this is the, how they've done it. Um, so the human race sits kind of somewhere at the bottom of the totem pole in that regard. As far as races go, procreative sex is a means to survive like all species in this planet. Well, most species, not all. Because there are species in this planet that reproduce without sex. So in biology on this planet, there are species, strange as they may seem to you, that are in the oceans in this world that have been documented to reproduce without the need for sexual contact. In very much the same way that there's a cloning or taking of DNA from each species in the ocean and hosting and creating another of its kind. And these species tend to live on for a long, long time in the oceans. So there is scientific evidence that such existence goes on on this planet anyways. Not everything has to have sex to exist. Um, so I hope this video has been informative and dispels the fear. Maybe hopefully dispels some fears of a hostile takeover. The human race goes out of existence they would also go into extinction.